Hi, so we're picking up where we left off with the uh, reduced uh, surface area there on the wing and uh, dynamic testing of this structure. So we're still without wing ribs and it really starts to uh, get moving here. So that's nice. And uh, also I wanted to make a, um, yeah, this is the testing of the um, vertical that it doesn't get into much uh, oscillation. It's not perfect, but it's uh, pretty controllable. And um, also I wanted to do a like a benchmark for uh, efficiency. So I'm mounting a uh, amp meter here and uh, I'm filming it with a GoPro. So it's pretty it's an analog digital thing. Uh, it's this is a simple way to do it. I have a current reading via the uh, receiver and stuff like that. But the thing is the rotating part it is not, uh, you know, it's separated from the receiver. So it's difficult to use that. Uh, okay, so uh, this is just a benchmark testing, so the actual number is not that important, uh, just as a reference. So it's somewhere just uh, under 7 amps in hover uh, at 30 volts uh, times 3, because I'm only measuring the amp drop for one motor. So uh, now I wanted to see if I could increase the efficiency uh, by uh, re-adding the ribs, the leading edge, ri leading edge wing ribs, so I'm doing that there. And this is the paper uh, tape I'm using for the leading edge as well. It's water-based glue on it, it works really well. So now I'm just uh, retesting it, the same, everything is the same except for the, um, uh, for the added ribs there. And as it turns out, I gain around 5% uh, hover efficiency, and um, also it's uh, less uh, easy to get into the stall when you are doing a descent, so that's good. So I, I guess it has, uh, the wing grips really does uh, buy their way onto the structure, uh, all they, although there's uh, a little more work, but 5% is pretty decent increase in efficiency, it's hard to get that uh, any other way. And of course I have to do the, like, the dynamic testing of this uh, setup as well, of course. So I'm just uh, trying to fly it like as fast as I can forward and backward and so here I'm doing a little bit higher speed and it feels uh, easier to move uh, in any direction with the reduced wing skin so that's nice and uh, yeah the vertical ascent and descent is, uh, is still good so the next step now is to see what happens if I add fairings to it so this is the uh, dreamed up structure. Uh, it's supposed to be, of course, of course really big. So uh, let's see how the uh, craft um, handles with the uh, with the drag and the uh, turbulence generated by this by this structure. And it turns out, thankfully, that it, it's uh, still still good. It still has good characteristics. It's slower, uh, of course. It's a, a, a lot of surface area added, but it doesn't induce any uh, like negative flight characteristics, so so I'm pretty pleased with that. But I, I really I can't fly it as fast uh, as before, and that's a little bit you know uh, not super satisfactory. But I think I can. Um, uh, yeah, it's still acceptable. Here's an interesting thing here: when I slow down and for the return motion, it starts. Uh, to drop and I had to add power and, and we will see that later on when we do the smoke testing um, what happens there's a very consequent behavior that it does that all the time so uh, obviously a little bit more efficient to uh, fly it forwards than hovering So the uh, the uh, half sphere up on the top there is actually supposed to be like four meters in diameter in the dream version. So this would be the sort of scale, and it it would be covered with clear PVC. And the cone in the bottom is for uh, flotation. So it's supposed to be super light, but like air, air and water tight structure. Uh, so it will hopefully enable you to land on water, and it it makes sort of a logical. Uh, shape of it is this sort of stream like it's not not perfect teardrop, but it's still it's still pretty good So I'm happy that it works out aerodynamically as well But all of that is, is of course just like pipe dreams, but it's still nice to see that 
everything goes together so far. Okay, so next up now, just for fun really, uh, to see what happens, I'm adding a sm smoke grenade on the top there. Uh, and I'm going to add one to the wingtip later on here, just to see if uh, something unexpected uh, gets uh, visualized by, by this. So let's start out with a yellow smoke, smoke bomb here. And uh, really, to get the most out of it, I should have speeded this up like, I don't know, three or five times or so, because it's easier to, to see how the, uh, the fluid motion really is when you speed it up. But I left it here in, in the actual speed, and you can uh, uh, perhaps via the YouTube function uh, speed it up uh, a couple of times. Uh, I got the most out of, it, out of it when I could just scroll with the, the uh, touchpad here on the computer back and forth uh, several times and you get a feeling for, for the airflow around the, the wings. And of course, <laughs> the negative thing with flying with smoke in a windless, on a windless morning, it's kind of obscure. But I have a second uh, camera position that you'll uh, get to see here once this uh, smoke bomb has uh, burnt out. But you can see that there's not a lot of um, recirculation like up in the middle where the big hole is. It's of course there are wing wingtip vortices uh, close to the wingtip, but it's not a like a column of air going up in the center of the craft where there's no fabric. Uh, it sort of generates a pretty even uh, column of air going downwards, as far as I can tell anyway. So here's the same sequence from another perspective. You can see here when I do the stop here at the left uh, part of the uh, frame here in a moment that uh, the craft really get, gets sort of stuck in its own uh, downwash. So that's why I had to add power every time I change uh, like for, from forward to reverse motion. Uh, it gets stuck in its own weather system sort of. And when you're just flying in a line like this, it's a gentle path of air you're leaving behind that is pushed down but when you stop the motion you get stuck in that air going downward so here I had to to add a lot of power to to not just get in the own downwash and once I get about, about the downwash I can fly with the reduced power again so it's a very obvious thing that happens there every time I I arrest the motion and yeah, start entering my own downwash yeah, and just check out this, uh, the wind's motion here. It's, uh, I think it's 50 times sped up. As you can see, it's a really calm day. Okay, let's uh, try the uh, wingtip mounted smoke grenade here. And this time the smoke is red. And I just wanted to watch the spiral motion of the, uh, the air coming off the wing there. And again, <laughs> obviously, only smoke grenades are for obscuring the vision, it, it really works. So, yeah, as a pilot you get sort of panic when you can't see the craft anymore almost. But you can start seeing the spiral motion, spiral motion air there going down, leaving the wings. So, yeah, it looks so good. Okay, so again, the same event here, and I'm going to start flying forward. In just a minute. You can see it's a pretty even airflow there going down. You can see the downwash in there. Speeding up a little to stay in there.
one thing I really enjoyed with the, this uh, smoke grenade is that it smells exactly like fireworks. So, so I had the, the joy of like inhaling the, the New, Year's, New Year's Eve smell uh, for a long time there because the smoke just lingered. It was sort of funny. The whole area there covered. Okay, so uh, nothing uh, really radically changed my perception of the craft. It, it behaves sort of like you would imagine. But I was just uh, interesting to see if, if there was something obvious there that, that you could discover with uh, adding smoke. So uh, the next tests uh, are about changing out the uh, propulsion propellers. Uh, I have reduced the wing skin to half the wing at this point and I'm experimenting with going a little bit lower on the pitch of the um, structure so I am down to like 10 degrees of pitch right now. Uh, and that enables me to fly it more aggressively and faster but I'm starting to uh, hit the uh, the wall there with the uh, propulsion propellers pitch they are not they're doesn't they don't have uh, enough pitch and I cannot increase the voltage of the system the flight uh, the speed control is only can only take eight cells and I'm at eight cells right now so so that's up I have ordered some 14 or sorry 12 by 14 propellers these are 12 by 12 inch but I want to increase the pitch slightly up to 14 uh, and I might have to uh, make a DIY solution there to increase pitch uh, even further but uh, I have found these uh, 12 by 14 uh, black stock propellers so I'll start out with them to see if I can uh, gain a little bit of efficiency in the system so basically uh, what I've learned so far is if I reduce the wing skin or if I uh, decrease the pitch more I, I lose hovering efficiency but what I get is of course um, the possibility to fly faster, uh, like laterally, uh, but I think it's pre I think I'm, I'm at a good, pretty good like um, compromise now with the uh, hover efficiency versus speed forward, uh, because it's super important for me to be uh, like efficient in the hovering flight regime with uh, because this craft is all about that. But I don't want to be like stuck in one place. I want to be able to go somewhere with it. So so I have to sacrifice a little bit of the hover efficiency by. Uh, either like decreasing the wing surface or uh, decreasing the pitch. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure exactly uh, where the like best uh, um, like match is there right now for the surface versus propeller pitch and stuff like that. But that's uh, for me to like uh, uh, find out now with a couple of more tests. So I'm looking forward to that um, as well. Uh, but uh, I will say goodbye for now, and uh, I'll hopefully see you in a upcoming interesting. Um, experimental flight video. Bye!